Hey, what's happening guys? As we get closer to October, I'm gonna start telling horror stories to get closer to the Halloween spirit. But not all horror stories have to do with haunted houses or problems that come up during inspections. Sometimes buyers can become horror stories as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I numbered them correctly this time. Okay, six. Wow, that was actually gonna be part of the video. Still it still can be. <laughs> All right, number one. <laughs> Calling the listing agent or the seller. Look, if you hire a buyer's agent, contact them with questions you have throughout the process. I can't tell you how many times I've got sellers that I'm working with that reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I don't know if this is supposed to happen or not, but the buyer keeps reaching out to me and asking me questions about the property. They found me on Facebook, they're sending me messages on social media, and I'm really not comfortable with it. If you're working with a buyer's agent, make that your primary point of contact. Don't reach out to the listing agent and ask questions. Don't reach out to the seller. All it does is muddy the waters, it makes people confused, and it can cause a lot of problems. So please, stick with your agent and talk to them throughout the entire transaction. Number two, becoming unqualified. What does that mean? Well, once you get your pre-approval, once you're in the process of buying a home, once you're ready and under, ready, willing and able to buy that property, stop shopping. Don't look for furniture, don't look for cars, don't go buy any major purchases because you may inadvertently put yourself in a position where you no longer qualify for the loan. I can't tell you how many times I've been talking to buyers who think, oh, it's totally fine, I'm just gonna go out, I'm gonna shop, it's gonna be no big deal. What you don't realize is anytime they ask for your social security number or run your credit to see what kind of financing options might be available, whether you pull the trigger or not, that can put you in a position that may take you out of the process of buying a loan just from having your credit pulled another time. So once you're under contract, stop doing anything that can make it possible for you to lose the loan. Number three, acting like you own the place. Especially if you're not under contract yet, if you're going into an open house or you're going to a showing, this is somebody else's home. Don't just go sit on their couch. Don't like go through their drawers. Don't take food out of the refrigerator. You wouldn't believe some of the things I've heard that buyers have done in other people's property. It's not your home until you close and move into it. So don't treat it as such. Be respectful of the person who still lives there. It is their home and you should make sure that you're doing everything, everything you can to be safe, respectful, and courteous while you're visiting. Number four, requesting too much access. We get it, you're excited, you wanna move into the house. You wanna get some measurements done, you wanna find out where your furniture's gonna go, maybe you wanna get estimates for paint. That's totally fine, it's totally reasonable. But try to schedule all of that stuff at one time as much as you possibly can. Once you're under contract, it doesn't give you license to go back to the property over and over anytime you want. As I stated previously, it's somebody else's home. They don't necessarily want to keep leaving over and over again for you to do these trivial little things that ultimately can be taken care of after you take, care, take possession of the property anyways. Number five, being deceitful. Now this one is one that is unfortunately something that more people deal with than I do, and I'm pretty happy that I don't have clients who do this, but don't go out making offers that you have no intent of ever keeping. Throwing out a crazy high offer just because you think there's gonna be an opportunity for you to come back and negotiate something later on because of some nitpicky things that come up on inspections is not the way to go. Making a ridiculous request for something just so that you can try to get the seller to give in on something else is probably not the best thing to do either. We are in a very competitive market right now. If you wanna buy a property, you need to be as straightforward and upfront as possible because there are several other people who may be competing to get that property for you as well. Also, once you make an offer on a property, I tell all my clients this, you are under a legally binding contract. We're not looking for ways to get you out. We're not just throwing out offers to try to get you in a position that maybe you can buy the house. You need to be sure that this is the house that you wanna live in because my job is not to try to get you out of a contract, it's to make sure the transaction goes through smoothly. And number six, one of the biggest things that's kind of an issue is trying to rush people along. As I've mentioned, there is a huge volume of purchases going on right now. Interest rates are phenomenal, so it's also 
uh, got a lot of refinances going on in the market, and that means that lenders can be backed up at times. Don't try to push people along, no matter who it is. There are certain things that have to take place, there are timelines that have to be met to get through the entire process of buying a home. Pushing people along does nothing but add stress to the situation and ultimately makes everything a lot harder to get done. Also, if you are allowing the seller to have possession after the closing and you've already agreed to it and you know exactly what to expect, don't start asking them at closing to continue to push up the time that they're gonna get out of the house. That is not fair to anybody involved in the transaction. You agreed to those terms up front, so you need to make sure that you know what to expect and not to move forward or push people along. We've got some things going on behind the scenes. Sorry about that. These are just some of the ways that you can become a buyer from hell. Trust me, I've heard plenty of other horror stories from agents who have been working with buyers. Don't let yourself become one of the ones that we talk about and not too fondly.